Hello everybody and welcome to this edition of Inside Insurance. My name is Jean Ray, I'm a consulting partner here at KPMG and I'm delighted to be your host for the series. Today we're going to have a special focus on natural catastrophes and modelling of those and for that I'm delighted to be joined by Dr Barry O'Dwyer. Um, Barry is a director in KPMG Sustainable Futures Practice where he leads out on, on our climate risk service offering. He joined us from UCC where he was involved in the Centre of Energy, Climate and Marine and there he worked as a climate risk scientist and research fellow. There he led a wide range of national and internationally funded projects to support climate risk assessment and adaptation planning. So Barry, delighted to have you with us today. Um, we've been lucky enough to work together actually quite closely over the last year, year and a half, mainly in response to the central banks, I suppose, guidance in relation to climate risk. Um, I suppose before we get into the detail, it's probably just worth taking a stand back and maybe just setting the scene in terms of some of your views, uh, given your background in terms of, I suppose, the impact of climate uh, on the insurance sector in Ireland. Yeah, no, absolutely. So I think in terms of climate change, when we think about it, we really look at it in terms of changes in our average climate conditions or how our average weather is changing through time. I think increasingly though we've seen uh, of late is how these changes in our average climate are actually impacting on extreme weather events which are, are key for the insurance sector and we've seen that in the US with wildfires but equally here in Ireland Storm Owen where we had uh, uh, insurance claims of I think approximately up to 300 million just yeah. on that single event and similarly when we look at places like Middleton and the flooding yes. that was experienced <laughs> there yeah. um, and these events now, the science is starting to allow us to look at, well, how much are they, uh, how much is climate change contributing to them? Mm. And we're starting to see that fingerprint. And, and the example would be in Middleton, it was made twice as likely as a result of climate change, mm. but also the rainfall associated with that flooding was up to 20% more intense. So climate change is now impacting those extreme weather events, and that obviously has significant implications in terms of insurance and when they look at the the exposure that they yeah. might have to those events. And I suppose um, insurance right, is a, is a sector that's heavily steeped in data and I suppose people like me, like actuaries who are quite quantitative and you mentioned some of the intricacies there in terms mm. of impacts on mean and extreme and so on. I suppose what are you seeing in terms of I suppose how insurers are starting to deal with modelling um, some of these intricacies going forward? Yeah, so absolutely the insurance sector is responding now, recognises yeah. the challenge. And I think traditionally we NACAP models, so natural yeah. catastrophe models were used and very appropriate for looking at the current climate condition. Yeah. Um, so I suppose a key thing when, with, with, with the natural catastrophe models is they're calibrated on the current period. So the last one to five years, that's the baseline on which they work. With changing climate conditions, we have to take a more forward-looking approach. So what will our future climate be? And what we're seeing in the market now is insurers starting to use NACAP models that are conditioned by climate change projections. So it looks at well, what might the future uh, average mm. climate condition mean and what will that mean yeah. for extreme weather and exposures. So we are seeing that response within the insurance sector for sure. Um, and I think certainly in some of the work we've been doing, um, you touched on the Translate data set, which I think mm. you would have worked in in your time, I think, prior to joining KPMG yeah. at UCC. Surprisingly, though, a lot of the insurers, some of them were not so aware of it. And to me, it, it would seem like quite a useful data set in terms of um, not just the, the risk assessment, but also kind of underwriting and understanding your exposures in more detail. Could you just give a bit more context to that for those who might not be familiar with it? Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think it is as well to look at, you know, what's happening nationally. So yeah. I think we've insurers, as we said, are using NACAP models conditioned with, with climate change data, and they use a really wide range of data to do that, different climate projections. Yeah. But nationally here in Ireland, we now have Translate, and this was produced by, by Medairn. And, and, and as you mentioned, I, I worked on Translate when mm. I was in uh, University College Cork. And what's really important about Translate, it is the best in class for Ireland now in terms of climate yeah. projection, provides very finely resolved data, 1.5 kilometres squared, for a really wide range of yeah. different variables. Um, and 
it's now seen as the, the most appropriate data for looking at projected climate change in Ireland, so really key tool. It's contributing, I suppose, wider insurance. So we did the National Climate Change Risk Assessment that was re recently yeah. released. That employed Translate to understand how nationally we might see risks change. And ultimately there, I suppose, the key outcomes are we, it's a wide range of risks. So extreme yeah. wind in, in the short term, coastal flooding, yeah. uh, also an issue as we move out to mid-century, and then heat becoming an increasing issue here in Ireland as well. Yeah. And I suppose, Every model right has pros and cons. Are there any particular pros and cons to be aware of from Translate, or maybe more broadly, you know, as we look forward in terms of NatGap models and things we need to look out for as well? Yeah, no, absolutely, and it, that's really important to understand that that climate data that's being used in, in these models. So Translate, as it, so it's we use the word bias correction. Now, okay. so basically, yeah. Translate is tailored to Ireland. So when we look to the future, we can see projections in terms of the absolute value. So what's the projected temperature rather than just the change? So that's a really key aspect to translate. We can, mm. we can use it in that respect. One of the drawbacks of translating any climate model is it looks at the average condition. So we now are very interested in tail risk within the yeah. insurance sector. And um, so these climate models aren't particularly good at modeling the tail risks. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where that uh, interplay between yeah. the NACAT models and, and the climate models really comes in, into, uh, yeah. into its own. So we can use climate change projections and then apply uh, natural catastrophe models to start to consider the tail risks that we might mm. see in the future. Yeah, because tail risks obviously, you know, significant importance for the actuaries uh, listening uh, in terms of trying to estimate capital and different things. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I suppose then we've covered quite a bit, right? I mm. suppose if there was one key thing you'd like the audience to take from today, uh, I suppose, what would that be? So the key thing would be, I think, in terms of in the market, we see a lot of providers providing yeah. NACAP models with, with climate change uh, included. Mm. I think when we look at those models, we have to really consider what's the data that underpins them, what's the yeah. climate change data that underpins them. And certainly we see in the market uh, natural catastrophe models underpinned by global climate data, mm -hmm. which is, yeah. is, is, is very good data, but the spatial resolution quite high, yeah. 100 to 200 kilometers squared, et cetera. So it's really to interrogate what's underpinning this model. Is it tailored to my region? And mm -hmm. that's really important consideration as well. And then start thinking about the hazards. What mm -hmm. hazards or perils is it covering? So yeah. traditionally, we see extreme wind and flooding. Um, coastal flooding has become an increasing issue in Ireland, and, and, and yeah. that's something that's not fully captured. Um, and equally, those more risks around heat, as an example, for health insurers, etc., something that would need to be considered. Yeah. And I suppose more broadly then from a NACAP modelling perspective, what are some of the key things that insurers need to be thinking about? So insurers need to be thinking about when they look at the, the models that they're using, yep. what's underpinning them, what's yep. the climate change data that underpins them. And climate change data and the models can be global, they can be European scale, or, or they can be developed at, at the national scale, like Translate. Yep. So I think it's, it's key when we look at those NACAP models that we we understand the, that climate change data and how appropriate it is for the, the context that we're looking at. And then yeah. in the context of Ireland, Translate yeah. is certainly the most appropriate. Yeah, yeah, it seems to be, yeah. yeah. Um, that's great. I suppose if there was one key thing for the audience today to take away, um, what would that be? I think the key thing would be when we start to look at these uh, models is, is the transparency. So. Do you understand the inputs to the models, the climate change projections that might be conditioning those models? So that's a, a really key point. I think as well, you have to think around where the data sets underpinning those models come from. Yeah. So, you know, are they from credible sources like the mm. IPCC or equally the likes of our uh, natural, uh, natural, national meteorological <laughs> agencies like METAIR? And, yeah. um, and, and, and then how useful those models are, are for you. So are they salient yeah. to your needs? Do they provide you what you need in terms of looking at your exposures? Yeah, yeah. So almost aligned to traditional model risk uh, in terms of transparency and governance and, and so on. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Okay, well, thanks a million, Barry. Thanks for joining us today. No and I suppose, as usual, for those at home, thank you for joining us as well today. Um, 
If any of the topics that we've discussed particularly resonate with you, please feel free to reach out to Barry, myself or usual KPMG contact. Thanks for joining us and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Mm -hmm.